In today's video, we will delve into the third installment of Orson Scott Card's Shadow Saga titled Shadow Puppets, published in the year 2002. Its original name was supposed to be Shadow of Death, but the rather grim title was dropped eventually. This 375-page continuation directly picks up the narrative from the preceding novel, Shadow of the Hegemon. As a consequence, Shadow Puppets scores identical to Shadow of the Hegemon in most semi-objective figures of merit, while its sci-fi mode scale rating falls within the mid-range, it is worth noting that the novel seldom capitalizes on its futuristic setting at the turn of the 22nd century from a sci-fi perspective. The depicted conflicts and events could easily have transpired in the early 2000s, looking purely through a scientific and technological lens. Only the glimpses into space exploration and colonization briefly remind readers of the futuristic backdrop. However, for the most part the narrative unfolds on Earth, maintaining a relatively expansive setting, as previously mentioned. The novel introduces a limited number of new concepts and ideas featuring a reasonably sized cast of characters without venturing into the extravagant. Shadow Puppets was not able to secure critical accolades in contrast to its predecessors, since it was not nominated for any of the noteworthy science fiction or fantasy literature awards. At least, I could not find anything to the contrary. In any case, its popular reception is on a similar level as its direct predecessor, Shadow of the Hegemon, as evidenced by a combined rating of 4.0 out of 5 stars based on tens of thousands of reviews on the usual aggregator sites. As with other books that are part of the Enderverse, you should be aware of potential spoilers during the following plot summary and discussion. In this particular instance, parts of Ender's Game, Ender's Shadow, Shadow of the Hegemon and even Shadow Puppets might be in jeopardy of being spoiled. Heed this warning and take the necessary precautions. The plot of Shadow Puppets unfolds after Peter Wiggin, Ender's older brother, has finally secured the, at that point, toothless office of Hegemon. Nevertheless, Peter, together with his trusted counselors and supporters, starts to elevate his current position by relentless diplomacy and by cleverly tipping the scales in a world ravaged by ongoing military conflicts with a small yet effective rapid deployment force, of which former battle school graduates play a pivotal role. Meanwhile, Bean and Petra are once again tormented by their nemesis Ashiel. It is clear to everyone involved that a final confrontation will be inevitable. As with other novels written by Orson Scott Card, one obvious example would be Xenocide and Children of the Mind, there are sometimes sets of novels that you can consider to be basically one single book in terms of their content, even though they might have been split up. Shadow of the Hegemon and Shadow Puppets, as well as to a lesser extent Shadow of the Giant, are entwined in such a relationship. Therefore, these novels share also similar strengths and weaknesses. For one, the geopolitical chaos of nations like China, India, Thailand, Russia and a united Muslim caliphate backstabbing each other in a never-ending series of wars and military interventions once one global power has overextended becomes rather repetitive and could have been inspired by an afternoon playing the board game Risk with a bunch of friends. Similarly, former battle school graduates first being used by their nation's high command in a prominent position, without seriously taking into consideration the battle school graduates' advice, only for the graduates then being able to overcome these obstacles and take the reign of their nation, is also repeated several times with different cultural flavor. Another weakness is once more the main antagonist, Ashiel, whose prowess to manipulate his way into leading positions of various nations and organizations just seemed unbelievable in Shadow of the Hegemon. However, to the credit of Orson Scott Card and the plot in Shadow Puppets, at least one plot point is now that many are finally aware of Ashiel being a traitorous to anyone. 
Furthermore, the direct confrontation with Bean and Petra elevates him from a laughable attempt at a villain to a serviceable paper cutout of a villain. It's at least an improvement. This brings me to Bean's and Petra's arc, which is probably the best part of Shadow Puppets, thus mimicking again Shadow of the Hegemon in this respect as well. It is not anything groundbreaking, but certainly an interesting subplot related to past trauma, one's own future and a legacy in a chaotic world. Another positive aspect of Shadow Puppets are the glimpses that we get from the ongoing efforts related to the colonization of former Formic planets by the International Fleet, which is an important foundation for the eventual formation of Star Wars Congress and the Hundred Worlds, which are pivotal for the plot of the chronologically later novels of the wider Enderverse. Overall, Shadow Puppets is basically more of Shadow of the Hegemon, including the good, but also the bad. These stories are a necessary bridge between the events on Earth during Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow, as well as thousands years later in Speaker for the Dead. Although one might ask the question why this bridge needed to be this long winded. If you like this video, you may also enjoy the other reviews and content on my channel. Feel free to leave a comment if you want to discuss the novels or if you want to suggest other books that I should review in the future. Please consider upvoting and subscribing, it is much appreciated. Thank you for watching and until next time.